Hello, welcome. Um, it's really great to be here. I uh, appreciate you guys um, joining me for this talk. Uh, quickly, is this FOMO, um, taking control uh, of your career and your life. Um, so just a quick thing. Um, so who am I? Uh, founder, uh, Managing Director of IO, Japanese for Engineer, so working to support the uh, engineering workforce. Uh, those picture, that picture of my two girls, Lila and Devin. Um, my wife, also an entrepreneur, uh, owner operator of Pilates Back Bay. So if you guys are open to you know, building up that core, um, definitely go check her out. Um, uh, big time contributor um, and um, community member for uh, DBO or Boston DevOps Network and uh, DOD um, member and organizer since 2004, 14, sorry, excuse me. Um, just a quick, Quick couple notes about me, um, background and beliefs to give you some context, operation management, uh, people and leadership focused, uh, huge believer in teaching and learning for life. Um, when you learn, learn with the expectation of teaching others because you'll take a deeper dive into you know, the new information that's being um, processed. Um, professional networking, I feel is, is each and every one of our responsibilities um, for that safety net. Um, community engagement, always trying to give back in any way um, I can. Uh, my thoughts here for DevOps is it's a culture and a thought process for how people collaborate um, to create and deliver value for teams and business. So, FOMO. The goal for my talk today is to empower each of you with the knowledge and tools to blaze your own path and take control of your career um, through self-evaluation, goal setting, and the execution of a well-designed development plan to bring you from the dark side into the light. The goal is to Hulk smash that FOMO. You know, before we uh, jump into how professional development planning can help you, let's define what FOMO really means. The fear of missing out. In the majority of cases, FOMO stems from a feeling or sense of aimless wandering in our lives and career. This lack of direction then manifests itself into feelings of helplessness that make us more reactionary to people and events around us. When, when folks feel this lack of control, negative patterns develop downstream. So you become a product of your environment with very little influence to control your personal growth, professional contribution, and or career decisions. Folks who deal with FOMO typically find themselves in these pathologic or bureaucratic type organizations where it's a command and control of staff that is the ultimate desire and effect of leadership. Trying to navigate out of one of these organizations while avoiding other pitfalls is extremely challenging and a scary experience. You know, especially if you don't have a plan on how you're gonna accomplish this. Our industry has been exploding. We all know this. I mean, half the talks were about who's hiring and you know, leave there to come here, right? Um, you know, it's been amazing for growth and financial advancement in the industry. But what has it done to the workforce? In my experience, the technical workforce has been the most negatively impacted by this expansion. When business has constantly exceeded uh, the skill of capacity, we end up having to take shortcuts. Um, and unfortunately, from my experience and what I've seen is that falls on the development and growth of the workforce. So let's take a look at some of these examples, all right? Many of us turn to our managers, you know, for help and guidance, right? When you put your career in others' hands, where do you think you're going to end up? This is one of my managers, you know, angry at me for asking stupid questions, angry at taking control uh, and actions into my own hands. Or, or uh, you know, this, this character, right? Uh, constantly telling me how to do my job, doesn't really know what my job is. Uh, you're, you, you think to yourself, awesome, okay, you know what, hey, it's not from leadership, at least I have my, uh, my teammates to lean on for help. Whoops, looks like everybody left. Some people went over to see Brian Kelly at, uh, at Conjure. So everyone who I liked and could help me is no longer around. Now I'm left with uh, these jokers. 
That person hates fixing problems. You know, honestly, I don't even know what the person does. Does anybody? They're still around. Sorry, not my problem. Uh, well, whose problem is it? Not my problem. Have you ever been accountable for anything? <laughs> what about Brent? You know, they seem to solve all the problems but teach no one, all right? Every escalation runs through them by design. Management literally gave them the keys to the castle to be a single point of failure. And you're thinking to yourself, I'm gonna be working with these folks to make this kind of journey and transformation what do you think is going to happen next if you stick around in this state? Overworked. No control. Misaligned rewards. A community that is not supportive. The values intrinsically and extrinsically do not align with the organization you're with or the leadership that you follow. This is the definition of burnout. Um, this is a great uh, piece that I actually shared through the Slack channel through our community by Elizabeth Grace Saunders. Um, check it out uh, through Harvard Business Review. Um, if you find that some of these ideas kind of resonate with you, right, um, fear not. Because I'll tell you, there is a way to regain your control and re-energize your life. A professional development plan. All right, let's define what that means. Um, this is from Wiki I took out of uh, September 20th, 2017. Uh, a PDP is a framework or guide used to document specific goals and set out a strategy on how to meet those goals. Right? So the first step in any plan or um, journey or transformation, define the goal, or to what end, right? Stephen Covey, uh, if anybody, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, highly suggest that book. Um, rule two, beginning with end in mind. For most of us, knowing our destination might not be perfectly clear, all right? That's okay. We can take some assumptions as to where we want to go. Um, this being DevOps days, what I'd like to do is look at some of the influential leaders um, and, and focus on some of their, their developments, Gene Kim, uh, Nicole Ferguson, Jez Humble, they focus on what we call the, the triple A's or the three A's. It's attitude, aptitude, awareness. You know, how, am I how I perceive the world around me, how I react to those views, um, how I engage with the people around me, um, and how I, how I react to those engagements. It's a state of mind. Uh, your aptitude, the ability for problem solving, um, being able to pick up new learnings and ideas, uh, design, et cetera. Um, awareness, my ability to read between the lines. I feel like this is such an important characteristic in DevOps. Uh, identify people's motivations quickly. Understand downstream effects of technical solutions and team behaviors. So the three things that, the three A's are for attitude. Be positive, be tenacious, yet humble. Um, aptitude, your technical skills, uh, your being solutions driven in your mindset. Teaching and learning, a way of life. Awareness, empathy, relationship building, an open listener, um, and a, com a community engaged networker. So some folks may be thinking to themselves, you know, I can't change who I am. Those AAAs are character, tra character traits or personality um, uh, reactions, right? The AAA is not about changing who you are. It's about knowing who you are and what areas of opportunity you should be focusing on to better yourself. Um, and this is what your plan is for, right? Um, remember, this is, your PDP is your plan created by you for a uh, result and a destination that you want to take. So since we have some end, you know, end thoughts in mind or destination, we kind of have an idea as to where um, where, what's the next step, right? We need to figure out where we start from, right? And these are the questions I like to ask. Uh, where do I begin? You have to know thyself. You know, what are my strengths and opportunities? What is important to me? And why do I feel these ways? Your motivators, your drivers. It's hugely important for people to really think about this uh, um, deeply, uh, to, to be honest with yourself. 
Um, some of you may already have this um, information answered. For, the, for those of you that may not and are unclear, there are some great online resources for an objective view. I like to use different assessments, personality assessments um, online. If you guys are familiar with disassessment or like Myers-Briggs, uh, we got a local company called Predictive Index down uh, South Shore. These provide at least a baseline understanding as to who you are, and they give you examples of, if I'm this character trait speaking to these people, this is how I should try to uh, you know, um, vocalize my thoughts and ideas versus you know, an ABCD type person. Um, also, Muse.com is a great resource online. Um, highly, suggest, uh, highly suggest for anyone interested. All right, so we, kind of, we got our start. We got some, some ideas as to where we're heading. Now, we got to create the tasks or the pathways there, right? And we do that by setting goals, all right? Our goals are individual directives in our plan that get us to our destination, similar to the type of turns that we need to take during navigation. Each goal needs to be, and I know you guys have heard this already, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time boxed. These are hugely important. If you're taking on any kind of task for new, um, a new directive, in DevOps, we have to measure, have visibility, have understanding, baseline exactly what those, uh, what is the parameters of which we're working in order to be able to accomplish that goal. You'll start to see, through your action plans, a framework begin to develop. So here's kind of the feedback loop that, uh, that, you know, that I found online, right? Plan, learn, do, assess. Um, this is a link from, uh, from a US um, New York uh, education department. Um, there is a repetition to the execution of these individual goals. We are working to create learning behaviors and transition those behaviors into habit. When you, start to get, uh, when you start to get to this step in your plan, you will start to regain some of the control and experiences and rewards of the work being done. Your new learning has begun. You know, let's, so now let's connect each of our goals into a roadmap or a PDP, which is professional development plan. So I pulled some online, and I'm just gonna share some of these with you, right? Um, and the reason why is, uh, when writing out the plan, uh, there are several examples online uh, with templates, graphs, et cetera. To be honest, it's somewhat overwhelming. Um, so my advice is to keep it simple and work within the tools that uh, you are familiar and comfortable with. Uh, the real value in everyone's PDP is in the formation and the experiences in actually executing that plan. Think of the creation of your plan as an assessment in learning about yourself. The plan is a framework, all right, for understanding and addressing some professional development needs um, and the pathways for you as an individual to, to meet those needs. You own this plan. Your professional development is not the responsibility of anyone but your own. There's three interesting rules that are not rules but guidelines that I want to provide here. Um, the plan is never final, all right? Your PDP is not written in stone. Uh, it can be and should be revised on a regular basis. Goals shift, people change, objectives change. Circumstances can present new challenges and opportunities. As a growing professional, you must remain nimble. I mean, this is one of the DevOps core principles. Uh, you never, you're never done professional development. It's not like you can graduate from this. It's ongoing learning. Being a constant um, a life learner means that you're constantly coming back and asking yourself, what's the new destination for me? And when you start, you start today, all right? No matter what station in life you're in, making a plan is for each of you. It is about you and what you want to accomplish, where you want to go, and how you want to control the next part of your life. So, there are buckets of development that I want to talk about. Continuing education, advancing your knowledge and core competencies, industry standards, technical uh, developments, focusing on advancing industry, uh, focusing on advancing your industry knowledge. Skills training. These are behavioral skills, i.e. leadership training, communication, et cetera. 
a big one here, EQ development. Success in DevOps, in my humble opinion, depends greatly on our ability to read others in situations and motivations. Having empathy, mindfulness, understanding unconscious, unconscious bias is huge in being able to build the layer of trust in order to make things happen, right? Professional networking. Your professional relationships is your first safety net uh, should any unplanned event happen to you. Having a strong and current network is vital for information sharing of ideas, advisement, and building trust. So using your PDP to manage relationships around you, right? Now that you have a plan, you have some goals that are with actionable states to get to meet those goals. You're really starting to regain some control. But what do I mean by this, all right? So let's take this, this character, right? Uh, this guy, Jerry, he's a recruiter. In the past, we used to utilize Jerry when we needed a job. You know, um, some, some of you called Jerry. Other times, you were just unsolicited by him with a job description uh, in your email. This experience was very transactional. Uh, Jerry sees you, says you can do this, you say yes, they say do you wanna do this for this? Yes, 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 right? Uh, literally, you're making a lateral move from a pathological organization to a bureaucratic one. But hey, you know, you're like, hey, can't be worse than where I left. You're literally running away from something into, to, into something unknown. Um, have you really advanced yourself in that kind of transactional relationship? In my mind, no. So let's flip this script, right? You actually have a plan, some, some guidelines, some frameworks as to where you want to be. You've been balancing your development buckets. Instead of Jerry reaching out to you unsolicited, you actually have a real relationship with Jerry. Uh, you've met on several occasions. Jerry's helped in putting a PDP together for you from his perspective, giving you information of what's happening out in the, in, you know, in the landscape that you may be unaware of. Uh, you've now turned Jerry into an active agent for yourself. You know, they can actually go out with real context about who you are, what your goals are, where your desires are, and change the dialogue when, when he's talking to his, his clients or internally. This is a complete flip of the narrative, right? From being transaction in your, in your relationships to suddenly being proactive. Let's talk about you know, uh, managing up with your, your boss. So we, we talked about these guys. You know, take these two characters from earlier. When you have no direction for yourself, if you, you're reacting to your boss, there is no directives or influence to the decisions being made upon you, all right? But when you have a plan, a PDP, you know what's important to you. There's real motivation for you to insert yourself into conversations or initiatives that align with your development plan. Furthermore, if you've been con equally contributing to your buckets, uh, you have the awareness and behavioral tools to build the type of trusted relationship with your manager uh, to be empowered and to be a real contributor to decisions being made about you. You provide, you're able to provide a vision and, and goals that your manager now can take into their meetings and talk about what initiatives they want to take on because their staff members are saying, this is what we want to do, this is where we want to be, help us to make this happen for ourselves. We're now starting to really make some moves here, right? And as a manager, imagine how different that relationship um, with your staff is. Your dialogue, your interactions, your engagements become very focused. Both sides are super engaged. As a manager, you know, why should you want all of your staff to have a PDP? When you're leading a team, learning how individuals work is vital to understanding the team dynamic. Individual motivations, goals, et cetera. These relationships are built over time through work interactions, one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera. In theory, the, you know, it's a satisfactory process, right? But in reality, managers don't have the time to prioritize and allocate to every responsibility. They're having to constantly reprioritize what's important 
at different times within um, uh, their lives or their professional work lives. So your one-on-ones end up getting postponed or rescheduled, uh, which sends a message to the staff members, this isn't an important thing to do. You know, it becomes a checkbox, right? Rather than an actual growing and learning experience. But with the PDP, you know what is important to each of your team members. You can prioritize projects around that. One-on-ones are structured, right? You're showing up with results, not what are we going to talk about? What's yesterday's weather like? How are you feeling today? Uh, you can manage up with much more confidence on, on initiatives that you take on, and you know that you have a motivated, engaged team behind you that are going to help make you successful. When people know how to ask for help with, between specific um, individuals, it's easier to grant someone help. If you can help somebody, but they tell you, they're not telling you how you can help them, it's very hard to take action upon that, right? So that's what a PDP can help for you. So taking back control, delete FOMO. When you have your goals and really believe in them, you are truly motivated to reaching those goals. You have become already booked. And when you're already booked, you can't get FOMO. Fear is deleted as you, um, as you are not worried about what others are doing or saying. You have your path before you. You understand what is really important and why. The excitement and confidence begins to build momentum. You are empowered. You are educated. You are motivated. In closing, remember, this is the, life is learning. So make it fun and enjoy the journey. Thank you so much for your time and attention. My name is David Fredericks, and I hope this helps you delete your FOMO. I'm going to do a selfie real quick, if you guys don't mind. Woo! <laughs> I tried to photobomb you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Dave, you, you have a few minutes for questions if you want them. Oh, so yeah. Sorry, guys. I was ready to just run off stage here. Uh, anybody, any questions, thoughts, ideas? It was that. We got one down oh, here. Sorry. Yep. Let's run, let's run the mic. Thank oh, you. Uh, during your presentation, you briefly touched upon the term unconscious bias. Uh, I wanted to see if you could expand on that a little bit more and maybe uh, uh, provide us with like some solutions that somebody could use if, if they were to come across such a thing in the workplace? Oh, man, that's a great question. And boy, we can get into some, um, some good discussions on this. Um, so the question was unconscious bias. I, I brought that up a little bit uh, within my EQ um, uh, skills training, right? And so how, you know, give an example and then some suggestions on, um, you know, how we mitigate it. Uh, unconscious bias basically is being, being at a station or stage in life where you, you've kind of grown up with blinders on um, and, you know, you, in the news we're hearing about uh, a lot of privilege and things of that nature. Um, but these are biases that have been built upon, um, upon in, in our minds um, and reinforced throughout our lives and we don't realize it as individuals that this is how we see the lens of the world. Um, and, you know, Everyone has it, okay, first and foremost. That's what I want to state. It's, we just aren't aware that we have it. So one of the ways that I've found is, is, a, is a great way to start to uncover that, that sense is to start to integrate yourself in, um, in communities, in, uh, in, in relationships that are not the same as you, where you're uncomfortable. And being vulnerable and starting to communicate that is how you start to identify, wait, you know what? I have been looking at people through this lens without even realizing this is the way that I've been painting them. Um, and hopefully over time and real relationship building, and you, you start to uncover more. And that's the thing about unconscious bias. As you start to unwrap the onion of your life, you start to peel back the many, many layers which you know kind of reinforce those, uh, the, that lens or, or the way you, you view it. Does that help? You know, it, it's, I mean, because it could get very complicated in, in the, th 
the, the main goal for me was to basically make sure that people are aware. The way you see the world and the lens at which you look is not the only way it can be seen, right? It's perspective. You're only seeing one side of the beach ball when the beach ball has several colors. And if you and I are looking only at red and we think that red is the, the only existence, we are missing all of the other um, sides of that beach ball. So that was helpful. All right, thank you guys. <laughs>